In the last few days, I've been getting a few comments asking me to analyze Kelly's stamps. And I was actually glad I got this request because one, I've been following Kelly for a while, so lazy me didn't have to do a lot of research on her channel. And two, Kelly is a very interesting case because her initial growth was super impressive, but her channel is now a bit dead. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you why and how you can stop something like this from happening to you. Let's get into it. So in case you don't know her, Kelly's channel blew up in 2020. And when I say blew up, I really mean it. She went from less than 10,000 subs in January of 2020 to over 500,000 subs in December of that same year. That is huge, I think we can all agree. But what's happened since then? Well, she had a few good months at the beginning of 2021, but after that, nothing much. Her views have stayed relatively stable and she's been getting between one and 4,000 subs a month, which isn't much for a channel as big as Kelly's. So what's changed? Why has Kelly's growth slowed down so much? Well. To understand this, we need to know why she grew so quickly in the first place. And for that, we need to go back to 2020. Don't worry, it will only be for a short time. So, long story short, back in 2020, Kelly was a purple cow. That's the ultimate reason why she did so well. She was different, she was unique back then. Why? Because she was authentic. She didn't look like she was trying too hard with her videos. She was relatable, her titles were mostly lowercase, she used abbreviations, she would show herself the way she is on camera, even if that meant acting strange, and her crazy intros were like nothing we had seen on YouTube until then. This is Professor Kelly Stamp. She was, and still is, a personality YouTuber. Someone who is naturally funny or entertaining, like Emma Chamberlain. And that's great, there's already too many hyper-produced videos with bright thumbnails and clickbait titles on YouTube. That's all good. The problem comes when one, you start getting competition, and two, you over-rely on your personality. And Kelly got competition as soon as she started blowing up. Think about people like Katie Yu. I've actually got a detailed video on the channel about Katie's growth, but in short, she literally replicated Kelly's strategy based on personality and relatability to blow up. And since then, many YouTubers have started making less produced videos with weird intros and showing more of their personalities on camera. This is not new or groundbreaking anymore, but it definitely was when Kelly started, and it made a difference. But the same thing that made Kelly successful in the first place is the main problem with her channel today, and that's because most of the value in her content comes from her personality. If you look at Kelly's videos, you'll notice that most of them have a storytelling component, which is great when you use stories as examples to illustrate your points or to make your viewer feel an emotion. But not when the whole video is a story from your personal life, you're over relying on your personality to make it entertaining and you don't have a title and thumbnail that make people want to click. This strategy works to some degree with Kelly's current audience, that is with people who already know her and know she will be entertaining, but it's not bringing new viewers to the channel. Like why would you click on this video or this video if you don't already know Kelly? It's sad but true that most people don't care. They need to know they're going to get some form of value from your video before they click. And yes, there's always a small percentage of your audience who loves you and will watch whatever you put out. But for most people, there isn't much incentive to watch Kelly's videos at the moment. The moral of the story is that if you want to treat YouTube like a business, you need to make videos for your viewers, not for yourself. These days, Kelly is making videos for herself and expecting people to be interested. Plus, on top of that, she's not experimenting or innovating at all. All of her videos start with a weird intro and tell a story about Kelly's life that may or may not be relevant to her viewers. She's been doing the same thing since day one, but unfortunately, what made videos go viral in 2020 won't necessarily make a video go viral today. And this is a problem that most YouTubers have from time to time. One day, sooner or later, you will outgrow your current niche. Think about someone like The Wizard Liz. She's growing like crazy today, but how many more motivational talks can you watch before you realize you've had enough? Maybe 30, maybe 50, maybe 100, but one day you won't have the energy to watch another one. Same thing with Kelly. How many more stories with weird intros can she tell before they make her irrelevant? People get bored of YouTubers and that's completely normal. You need to be trying to attract new audiences all the time on this platform. That's how it works. So if your channel is dead, don't feel bad. Know that it's part of the journey and it doesn't say much about you other than the fact that you need to start doing things differently. And I really hope Kelly can do this because I love her videos and her personality and I really hope she achieves her dream of world domination. If you want to know more about how Kelly blew up, make sure you check out this other video on KDU. As I said, they're very similar YouTubers and Katie literally replicated what Kelly did, which is why I haven't made a video specifically on Kelly's growth. If you like this video, this is also a good time to drop a like or leave a comment. I read them all and it's always super interesting to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.